Hello, I'm Eric Meeks, broker owner of Remax Desert Properties in Palm Springs and Indian Wells. Many people know me as the realtor guy. And today I just want to share with you two minutes about how to be a better realtor. And being a better realtor, besides the skills of being able to search out the right properties and definitely being a good listener, which is to me the number one skill of being a good salesperson, whether it's real estate, cars, encyclopedias, Mary Kay, whatever it is, the number one skill is being a good listener. But after that, you have to learn certain code phrases that are called closes in order to help you close the deal. Because customers are going to have objections. They're going to have built-in responses that are going to try to slow you down. Unless they absolutely love the property. But even then, sometimes they just think that's their job is to slow down the salesman. And one of the toughest objections to close is, I'm not in a hurry. So, you know, show me what you got, but I'm not in a hurry to buy. And even after you've shown them what you've got and it really fit the bill, they might say, well, thank you very much, but I'm really not in a hurry to buy. Okay, so oftentimes it's a smoke screen. They do want to buy, but they just, I don't know, they feel they need to shop, they need to negotiate, they need to look around. They, need, they feel that's part of their due diligence as a buyer. And probably one of the best things you can do, and the thing I try to do, okay, all the time through my sales career, is first off, you agree with the, with the customer. And you might say, whoa, 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 I thought we were gonna close the customer on buying. We are, but we wanna do it in a nice, polite way and be sincere in why we think the client should buy. And the first thing that we should do, because we don't wanna be antagonistic and fight, is we wanna agree. And uh, in this situation, that would be, well, I understand and I agree. You know, my wife and I, and some people say my bride, and if you notice what this close is called, it's called the bride close. My bride and I, we, you know, several times, many times in, in our lives, we wanted to wait. And sometimes we did and sometimes we didn't. And the times that we didn't and we rushed in almost always included spending money. And I'll tell you, any time you spend money, it's a time that you want to think a little bit about it, don't you? And the client's going to say, yeah. Exactly. That's why I'm not in a hurry. I say, I totally understand. I get it. I mean, let me tell you, when we were a little younger and we were looking to buy that first house that we were going to buy, we went ahead and we bought it and we stepped up and we paid for it. And we might have paid an extra five or 10,000. You know, in those times, things were a little cheaper and we paid probably a little extra. But you know something? If we had just waited another 10 or 20 years, we would have been more sound and better buyers and we may have paid even more but we might have made a better decision yeah i mean no doubt about it we got smarter as we got older at least that's what we tell ourselves right and uh the person's going to be like uh, i don't know this is uh i don't know if they're if he's really agreeing with me the fact is you are agreeing with them, but you're also kind of using some very gentle sarcasm to illustrate your point in a very nice, polite way. As a matter of fact, you know, Mr. Client or Mrs. Client or Mr. or Mrs. Young Couple, um, when we wanted to have our first kids, and I'll tell you, nothing is more expensive than kids. We, we should have waited. If we had waited 10 or 15 years, we would have been more solid on our feet. We would have been more knowledgeable. We would have had that better home and we could have given those kids more. And uh, we didn't do that. And luckily we still raised some fine kids, but I just, I look back on that and I think, you know, what if we had waited? And they're gonna start saying, well, now, wait a second here. Aren't you saying, well, I'm just agreeing with you, you know, because heaven forbid, that you make a decision you don't like. So let's just go down a few of the checklists. You said you wanted a home with this amount of bedrooms, right? Yeah. Well, you said you wanted a home that was big enough for the family and room for a dog in the backyard, right? Yeah. And it is affordable, right? Yeah, well, yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay. So let me ask you, if it's not the affordability and it's not that it fits all, all the check marks that you want to have on it, 
what's really stopping you from buying this home today? And shut up. Because he who talks first owns whatever is said next. And if you've done a good job of listening to your client, of pointing out the features and benefits that are important to them, of really making an effort to find the right home to walk them through, then you're a decent person and they should recognize that and they should say what it really is. I need a little more down payment. We haven't quite nailed down our lender. My job is thinking about transferring. Whatever the real objection is, I want to show it to my wife and make sure she loves it too. That's okay, because in the end, Mr. 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 Mrs. Client, isn't the important thing that you and your bride make the right decision? And if this home's not the right decision, believe me, I want to know. But if it is the right decision, are you ready to get on to the next chapter of your life? It doesn't get any better than this. There you go. That's called the bride clothes. My name is Eric Meeks. This has been two minutes to helping you be a better realtor, and I hope you find this enjoyable, informational, and educational. Thank you very much. Have a good day.